<clears throat> the first thing I would like to say, art is the hardest GCC. If you don't agree with me, get out. Loads of you on my TikTok have been asking me to make this video um, and to share with you how I got full marks in my art GCSE. I don't actually know how I got full marks in my art I've also GCSE. never made a YouTube video, so I want to apologise in advance for the horrific editing um, and clear inexperience. If you take nothing else from this video, take this. Art GCSE is nothing to do with artistic talent. Nothing. I was in a class with this girl. She was a hundred times better than me. Better than everybody in the class. Incredible. And like, when I say incredible, I mean, you know those people who literally come out of the womb, like, you know, Chucklose. She was Chucklose's biological daughter, I am convinced. Um, but she didn't do as much work and as a result I got higher than her even though she was far more talented if you have the will the determination the obsession I dare say and the mental health I don't have the mental health anymore but if you have the mental health at the beginning of the course to devote your entire life to it you will get a nine literally even if you can only draw stick men and I'm gonna tell you how. number one quality and quantity. Now the people who say quality over quantity, they have either not done art GCSE, they are the kind of people who come out of the womb drawing like Chuck Close, or they are just in fact the enemy. Because yes, quality is important, but quantity is everything. Because the more work you have, the more coursework, the more development that is. Let's start shows. by showing you guys my sketchbooks. As you can see, there's some here behind me. Here is my final piece. So I would sketchbook. recommend starting a new book every time you get given a new stimulus. For example, here I've got collections, surroundings, me, myself and I, which we all know and love. And the stuff I'm showing you now does not actually even include and my final, final piece. The final piece actually makes up the bulk of your exam work. Grab a pen and paper because I'm about to tell you what you have to include in every book you do about every stimulus, every An project initial you do. response to the stimulus. This is so important. I've done it dramatically because I'm a try hard, but all it has to be is a paragraph about what you first thought when you heard the stimulus. So say it was collections. I thought of a collection of butterflies, or a collection of vehicles, or a collection of women. Definitely and recommend. I did this for my final stimulus is a gut reaction book. So as you can see, I've annotated the exam Stimulus paper. was messages, so I filled the entire book with everything I thought about when I thought of messages, flags, hidden messages, media rights for women, literally screenshots of messages between me I'm and my best friend. already bringing in different media, which is going to be the key word of this video, different media. Photographs, screenshots, drawings, paintings, writing, newspapers. Next is mind map. This has to be at the front of every book. It can be key words, it can be artists, it can be programs, it can be and As usual, the more obscure, Next the you better. want your artists' research. Artists based on the topic. Then you write about why you like their work, and most importantly, you do a copy. Artists' copies are so important. These are my Chuck Close copies. And they don't have to be exact copies. For example, either. you can draw in the style of Vince. Or in Lowe. the style of Andy Warhol. As long as you have a mixture of both, you should you need be fine. To talk about that artist as if they are your reason for living. They are your, they're your soulmate. They're, they're the love of your life. You need to talk about them as if you think they are literally like the best thing that ever walked the earth. You need to be like, this is what he did to represent this, this is what he did to represent this, and I think that's just so clever, and I love that, and I want to take that forward in my work, and I want to use that, because it's just the best thing I've ever seen. We all seen. know the artists that are exceptional, and just their work is like their right arm, and it's beautiful, and it's inspirational, and it changes your entire mindset, and it changes everything about the way you see the world. But a lot of the artists that you were given by your teachers for GCSE art are still life artists, which, again, incredible, more than I could ever do. 
but there is to a certain extent not very much you can say about that because you know he's painting an apple sometimes don't get me wrong sometimes i'm not gonna sit here and you know be ignorant sometimes the apple does represent his beaten down heart but 95 percent of the time he's, he's just painting an apple you have to pretend he's not you have to you have to say the his command of color his way of making a composition create an exceptional immaculate vibe and feeling that it provokes in the onlooker it, it, talk rubbish get out a dictionary turn to a random page look at the longest word add it in if you are that stuck guys i can't stress this enough annotating artwork is the most important thing you will do this will take hours to explain so if you want i will make a whole separate video on how to then annotate you do your things. initial design ideas for your it's final project. rough sketches but make them then vary you pick a couple to develop which means add on detail add on ideas i think we can all agree that art examiners are stupid like they're not like terrible people or anything they're human beings and this is kind of in a way the same with your art teachers i don't get me wrong, I love my art teachers, but they're, in terms of what they look for in an art book, it's so simple. And development is literally their favourite word. Like, they get off on it. I, I would not put it past an art teacher to whip out an arm and have the word development in Latin tattooed to her skin that is that is how much you need are. to develop everything you need to develop your initial ideas your final plan your initial plan the ideas that you're not using you need to develop them because art teachers will they will it will make Once you've idea. developed your final idea you need to explain why literally why i'm going to talk you through my final piece because this is how in depth it needs to be and your explanation behind it and don't get me wrong like if you don't have an explanation make up an explanation it's no problem it's just playing I did a statue of Alan Turing for those of you who don't know he is a forgotten war hero he was gay so he was given a conversion therapy he was given medication which was given to people at that time um, and as a result he was he wasn't very recognised at the time, but he created the machine which decoded the Enigma code. Go with me on this, I have a point. The Enigma code was the code that the Germans used to communicate with the other Germans um, during the war, where they were going to set the bombs It off. was predicted that he shortened the war by two years. He then poisoned himself, he injected cyanide into an apple and he killed himself because of the medication he was on. We were given the stimulus of messages. For our final piece. Now I'm not hating on anyone here because I've done this but mo there are the people in this world, absolutely, I've done it, where you'll get a stimulus like the elements which is ugh. and then you'll decide right I'm going to split my canvas into four. I'm going to draw the sea, I'm going to draw the, the land, the wind and the fire. We love these people these people are not getting nines. And it's not because they are bad artists. It's not because they're not creative. It's not because they're not intelligent. It's just because they don't understand that art examiners see that every day. They see that every... They don't want to see a picture of the sea. They don't want to see it. They don't care. They don't care in the nicest possible way. They don't care. They want to see something new. You need to create something new. You need to take that stimulus in a way that no one else in your class is taking it because that is what I will win messages. I thought what messages are important within history, the Enigma code, because it was the tool that we used to show. So I created a life-size statue of Alan Turing. And the theme of the piece was the fact that he was the man that decoded the most important message that we have ever faced as a country, as people, do you know what I mean? It was vital. But the message of acceptance did not reach him on time. Therefore, he gave out a message to the world by killing himself. That is three ways I incorporated the stimulus into the final piece in quite a meaningful way. But you need more than that. I've just shown you this page. You need to, everything you do. I got up this morning to contribute towards my stimulus. I got up this morning because I wanted to give a message to the world. This is how 
ridiculous you need to be. In Art GCSE, if you're not looking at yourself thinking, I need psychological help, I'm unwell, if you're not doing that, you're doing it wrong. I said this in my TikTok, if your bed does not look like Tracy Emmons, and for those of you who don't know, it is, um, she's an artist and a lot of people dislike Tracy Emmons. I think she's incredible, but I can see why a lot of people get annoyed because we're in school making these massive sketchbooks, making these massive meaningful big paintings and this legend literally got out of her bed, which had like her underwear, it had um, cigarette packets, it had alcohol all over, draped all over her bed because she hadn't got up. Serious, serious face on now. Apologies because I should be serious about this. She, it is extremely meaningful what she did because she was suffering from depression and it was showing this is me, this is my bed, this is my head, this is what it's like in my head, this is my world, this is my resting place, this is my deepest point. Extremely meaningful, extremely clever, but you have to see the funny side of the fact that this girl got out of bed and she won a really big art award for it as well. And she turned up drunk to the award ceremony, but that's the story for another day. <laughs> but yeah, so a lot of people say, well, I just wanna get out of bed. And you can, this is the thing, you can. You can get out of bed, you can submit bottles of used alcohol, right? Of, of empty bottles of alcohol, if you analyze it, if you develop it, if you have a reason behind it, if you can write an essay about how meaningful and how big a difference it made to your life that you submitted that bed. Sorted. A star, a star star, you have a nine in your results slip. Going back to my point, my final piece, ways I interpreted messages. Um, he was holding a clock. My statue was holding an apple in one hand, which was supposed to signify um, the apple which he injected cyanide into, and he was holding a clock. And it was supposed to be, the message didn't reach him on time. So then you can go into the whole concept of messages reaching people on time. What happens if they don't? Um, then you have to think about the message of acceptance. So I had posters, I copied out posters, modern day posters. So for example, the one about um, people are gay, get over it. The pride flag, which obviously symbolizes messages of acceptance, messages that we should be giving to everybody. And then in contrast, I drew up, uh, which was a horrible task, but I drew up some of the old uh, posters that the Nazis used and that were used in the war of kind of propaganda posters and these disgusting um, things, which were basically idealistic families, um, a man, a woman, 2.5 children. And I drew up them because they were my two contrasting messages. And can I tell you, can I tell you why I got a nine? Not because they were good, don't worry because I did them in different media. We go back to different media. It's so important. It's so important. You want oil color, you want, you want watercolor, you want acrylic, you want oil pastels, you want pencils, you want collage. For, I mean, my final piece was a statue and on it I had, I painted numbers. Numbers, another message signifying the Enigma code, which was a message, the way that we can use numbers to give out messages, etc. Um, I put wire around the entire uh, statue, which was a great idea from my art teacher, because that signified the message of him being constricted by the messages in society. I hate the word message now. I hate it. I have a deep bitter hatred. Here are some pictures of how my final piece turned out in the end. This is a real opportunity to talk yourself up. Once you have done that final piece, that piece of artwork that has made you want to cry for weeks on end, that if there are people in Australia who haven't seen a picture of your artwork, what is the point? Excuse my skinny pigs in the background making as much noise as they possibly can. They were you featured. This is no exaggeration. When I finished my final piece, I got a book and I filled it with pictures that were literally just a different angle of my final piece. And you can look through it and there are literally just picture after picture of my final piece. You want to draw your final piece because you are going to have time after you finish your final piece in the exam. And in a minute, I'm going to explain why. 
but you want to draw your final piece, you want to make prints of your final piece, you want to make mono prints. You are so proud of that final piece. You're considering, you're considering getting a tattoo of it. Like the like the development Latin tattoo. You are actually considering getting a tattoo of your final piece. This is how proud of it you are. A lot of the end of your book needs to be of pictures, drawings of your final piece. The most piece. important thing that you will do is annotate your final piece. That is so important. I have got an annotation here. Because you see, once you've followed once my you've advice, you've got yourself a final piece that means something to you in your heart, that is original, you want everybody to understand everything about it. If, the, if it's not that meaningful, annotate it, make it out to be, do an English literature, make yourself a better artist than you are. My name is Emily Brady. <laughs> And I am an alcoholic. That, this is like an AA meeting because I'm literally just speaking truths of myself. You make yourself better by talking about it. That's it. I've Easy. skipped a few sections in between the original idea and the final piece. So once you've developed your initial idea, you need to do masses of experimentation, development of that idea after your experimentation. So you've gone off, you've painted some leaves or something. If you're, if you're, if you're the basic girl doing elements, me, <laughs> um, if you're doing that, then you need to go off, you need to paint your leaves and you need to come back and be like, do you know what? I enjoyed painting these leaves so much. Like it was so revolutionary for me. I have come back to my idea and I'm gonna change it a little bit. I originally, for my statue, for my final piece, was going to paint the face, like, as an actual face. Um, but then my art teacher and I had a discussion, and we talked about, okay, well, we can do it at numbers all over instead to signify enigma. We can do the wire. Um, and that is from experimentation. The amount of experimentation you need to do in your book is extreme. You need to use every media you can get your hands on. You need to fill up an entire section of your book just with the what experimentation. What do for experimentation? Look at one section of your piece. So, for example, if you're painting on mod rock, which is what I've done here, you need to paint on mod rock beforehand. You need to decide which font you're going to paint in. You need to do this level of detail in your experiment. Also, another thing, guys, that I nearly forgot about, you need your primary sources, which are pictures you've taken yourself. So, for example, if you're painting a TARDIS, you need your primary source of, uh, you know, I've taken this picture of a TARDIS I had when I was younger. Then you need your secondary source. So your secondary source, that's pictures that you get off the internet. Mood boards are a lovely thing to include in your experimentation, in your refinement, in your initial idea. The examiners get so bored with experimentation. Do something wacky. This is literally, I stuck in a piece of wood to my book. A good side note, if your examiner is not concerned about your mental health by the end of reading your book, again, you're not getting a nine. I'm sorry to break it to After you. your experimentation, you're gonna have my personal favorite, refinement. Refinement is what they make people do when you go to hell. And I'll see you there and we'll do it together because it's torture. Basically, what refinement is, is you, you micromanage every detail of your final piece. You decide exactly what it's gonna be. You draw out an exact, exact, exact plan of it. And then you draw out that plan about 10 more times in 10 more different medias until you literally want to never see that thing again and you still haven't done enough. I you. even went so far as to making a small scale model of my final piece. And these are literally like mini newspapers that I, I made because in the actual thing I drew up newspapers and when I say drew up I mean I painstakingly wrote word for word every word on the front I realize of the newspaper. I'm gonna have to show you because I look like a liar so basically these are the newspapers that I made they are real newspapers and then around them I've um, watercolored pages and I've watercolored and drawn out um, the front of newspapers but just so you can experience my pain if anybody is jobs worth pause it and read it i swear to god this is the exact paper that was around in those days about alan turing and his pardon that's the level of extra you have to be if you want a nine in gccr again not talent not talent at all it's patience resilience our favorite words after you've drawn out your final piece several times and you've used 
your final piece to make more mini final pieces like these projections i got the statue up and i put it on the whiteboard shout out to mr west great and idea evaluate it yay i'm going to talk to you very quickly about the evaluation i will make a separate video on how to annotate art but that's like an hour's worth so what i said i said in the beginning of this unit i was given this task um, I my first interpretation of the stimulus was however I wanted to make it deeper I looked at these artists um, this is what I think people would get from my work this is what I was so excited about making my work I felt this I felt so excited to tell a story through this this and that I encountered some problems along the way for example and this is a true story for example you make you make the statue you paint the trainers and then the trainers don't fit on the statue's feet. <laughs> Shout out, go watch my TikTok where I tell a story about that. Very entertaining. Um, but yes, you have to talk about your barriers. You have to talk about the things that have got in the way. You have to talk about how you fixed them. You have to talk about how you developed things. You have to talk about how your skills have been changed, how your skills have been enriched. You have to talk about what you've learned. I learned to mod rock, which has become my favorite thing. And then you have to talk more technically. So for example, I think my choice of colors is particularly effective because I think my choice of the wire, for example, or my choice of using this or this image or this composition is particularly helpful in portraying the theme, is particularly helpful in making the onlooker find a deeper meaning in the piece. I learnt this term from my drama teacher, a bang bang ending. What that is, I would recommend it in any essay. I'll do another video about GCSE English, but I would recommend it in any essay. You want to go out with a bang. You want to be like, bang. I just wrote this massive essay and I'm going to write an incredible paragraph to top it off. Let me read you mine. You can skip past this if you want, but savages among you who struggle to write an evaluation, listen up. In a sentence, I wanted to show the power of a message. I think I was very successful because the varying colours, clear bold titles and wire showed constriction, danger and damage. The clock and apple Alan Turing is holding makes the onlooker imagine Turing years ago taking a bite of that apple in exactly the same position and sending the ultimate message to the world that didn't accept him. Positioning and thought through juxtaposition of newspapers, of pardoning, and posters showing Nazi ideals of families shows how much society has changed, but also makes people feel empathy for Alan, who is on the receiving end of poisonous propaganda. If I were to go back, this is important. Say what you would do if you were to go back and do it better. If I were to go back, I would stuff the leg and make the wire ever so slightly thicker to give even more of a professional appearance and a human feel. And the wire thickness would emphasise even further the constriction and the message holding him back. Overall though I was moved to make this piece, it's been an experience I'll never forget and I hope I've done justice to the tragic story of how one bite ended the life of a legend and how the message of love reached the code breaker too late. It's very dramatic but at the same time it is a dramatic story and is is a serious topic and if you're dealing with a serious topic which I would definitely recommend doing, this is not like a, a sort of oh you know do a serious topic genuinely examiners prefer it if you deal with something more serious and that's not me being like oh go pick on like a problem or you know a problem in our society to get the marks i think art is genuinely better when it is revolving around serious issues so if you want to do something on feminism if you want to do something on on our society on how i mean social media is a bit cliche let's not lie we've all been there but if you want to do something, for example, mine very much revolved around LGBT rights, that's a massive problem. And that's something I feel really, really like it's a massive problem that at the moment they still don't have a lot of rights that, you know, heterosexual people do. It's a massive problem and it's something I feel really passionate about. Pick something you feel passionate about. If you don't, if you don't, if you pick water by the end, you will not ever drink water again. You will, you will hate water. You will hate whatever you pick. Pick something you care about because only then can you write about it in depth. Only then can you feel it. I'm gonna talk to you about two other things that you can include in your book. Number one, I am a romantic at heart. As you can see by the Doctor Who 
painting in the in, on my wall. I'm obsessed with extended metaphors and things that link together, circular structures, everything like that. If you are a poet, for example, I write lots, I'm not a poet, but I write poems. If you write, if you sing, if you dance, if you're a photographer, include it, include it. You want something that personalises your book, that makes the examiner like you. This is so important. Get a pen, get a paper, stop what you're doing, write this down. You need to make the examiner like you. If they don't like you, they don't care, Rebecca, about how good your drawing is. They don't care about your shading. They don't, they don't care. They just, they're humans and they want to be like, oh my God. Because being an artist isn't about doing art and being, oh, I'm getting deep. Being an artist isn't about being great at drawing. It's not, it's not. It's about making something that makes people feel. That's performers, that's writers, that's artists, that's everyone. That is what you need to bring into Art GCSE. You need to bring in your understanding of that concept. That is something that nobody else is doing at the moment. These people rocking up with their A4 canvases, they're drawing water, and then they're getting out of here. Messages, they're drawing their text messages. Great, listen, I love you all. If you're doing that, you're doing something. And you know what, it's really hard. It's really hard, Art GCSE is so hard. The fact that you've even rocked up on the day, amazing. But what will set you apart in, as an artist, as a person for the rest of your class, if you make something that makes people feel something? I And don't anyone comment, you can't do that. I know you can do that. There is something right now in your life that you feel deeply about. There is something linked to every stimulus in this world that you feel deeply about. One thing. And you know what? Even if it's a massive stretch, even if what you feel passionately about is vegetarianism and it's about messages, be like, okay, what about, you know, messages to society about the fact that we eat animals? How are they different to us? Do, link it, link it in some way, find a way and explain it and no one can argue with you because do you know what? No one can argue with you if you say it is My art. next point. You can do anything. If you can do anything and you can call it art. Art community disown me. I am ignorant and I know that. I went to an art gallery and me and my friends were messing about. I was young and we like used to draw these little question marks and put them in the art. Just question mark on a white piece of paper and put them like in the statues and things just to see if anybody would notice if it wasn't actually part of the art. I know I'm terrible but don't do that. I'm not endorsing that but you anything you can do you can get out of bed as Tracy Emin herself has proved to us you can get out of bed and you can call it art and do you know what the second you call it art it's art and it, it and it is art and what she did was meaningful and you could get out a blank piece of paper don't get me wrong it wouldn't be meaningful but let's pretend for a second I want someone out there a degenerate to test this theory for me walk in with a blank book and say it's my soul it's it represents me because I am a blank canvas. <laughs> and they theoretically could not argue with that because you're calling it art. And this is what I mean. Pretend it's art. My point fine. was years ago, include any, include poems, include songs, include something that humanizes your book, include something that you're passionate about, I for example. I would start each of my books with a poem and I would end each of my books with a poem. I would have a poem on the last and page. On the very last page, I would have this envelope. You can draw quotes, anything you're passionate about. What really made my examiner like my work was these envelopes. Think ending a book without any kind of closure is really, really strange. And I don't understand how people do it. And so if you have that envelope at the back of your book, and maybe like a picture or something that links in a sort of meaningful way to the rest of your work, you looked. looked what was in the envelope you have my poem and you have a picture of my garden in exactly the same position the day now i finished I was my actually book. inspired from by she doesn't even know this i've not spoken to her in like 10 years but my friend catherine who incredible artist she took she once showed me one of her sketchbooks and i thought that that was something so cool that she did she took a picture the day like the morning of her final exam and then the end 
and like it was the same spot but it was so cool and I was obsessed with it and I was like okay that's cool so I want like a document the day I finished my book and it became really cool because then it was like okay well I've got one in summer when the weather's nice and then I've got another one in winter when the weather's terrible what it did it made a thread it made a thread it was like these are all my books but they all belong to the same person that's nice have a trademark have something that have a, either whether it's a style whether it's something that you do have a trademark in your book so the examiner links all of the books back to you. This links back to the bang bang ending. The last thing the examiner is going to see is the last page of your coursework book that you submit for your GCSE. That's massive. You want to go out with a bang. So I'd already kind of done this and I was like okay how am I going to go out with a bang for my final thing. I had done pictures in my garden the day I finished my book, the day I finished my book. So for my final page, for my final little thing, I did a picture, but instead of the day I finished my book, it was the day we finished the war. And it was like a black and white picture um, of like people celebrating uh, along with the poem that I'd written about my final piece and about what I'd experienced throughout that. The last words the examiner read of my work were, just please just try to hold on tight before you take that fatal bite for love one day won't be a crime. But will that code reach you in time? The final message by Emily Brady. And then it was the picture, the day we finished the war. And that was my last thing. Not quite. I had one more thing. Now this is somewhat controversial, don't misunderstand me here. Um, the position that Alan Turing was in, um, the, the kind of thing with the apple and the clock, and it's supposed to signify like he was about to commit suicide. Will, will we be able to save him on time? And of course we weren't. What I did, what I thought would be really artistic, is just before I did my final piece, I kind of thought ahead and I sat on a chair in exactly the same position. I put the newspapers around me, the posters, um, it was the apple and the clock in my hand and it was in the pitch black darkness with only like a light shining on my face, like really creepy. And it was, and, and I can do that because it's art. This is what I mean, it is art and it's not to be taken lightly and it was a really serious topic I was dealing with. And it was for the purpose of education. Um, and basically what I was trying to say was anyone can be Alan Turing and you cannot know. Do you know what I mean? And I don't mean necessarily in terms of sexuality. I mean, I relate to him because a lot of my life I've been misunderstood. I, you know, women relate to him. But the work that women do okay is not always acknowledged because of the fact that they're women homosexual people can relate to him people who are from ethnic backgrounds can relate to alan turing because they are undermined within our society and the work that they do and the incredible contribution they make often isn't recognized and that's what i was trying to say with that photo. thing my examiner would do is she'd put the envelope back and on my very last page she'd see this very creepy picture and i wanted her him my teachers to be left questioning hang on what does that mean because i know the meaning behind the piece but why is she sitting in that position like wh why is she doing that what i want them to think about it give them something to think about even if it's right even if you come up with a question right really an abstract question like what makes you what makes you yourself for the me myself and i unit it's so corny but Put a question at the end of your book, put a confession, put something that makes them think, that makes them remember you, that makes them go, oh, she's really cool. Also, you want to add these quirky little creative contributions all the way along the line. Have little jokes with the examiner. Do you know what I mean? Like in your book, and this could be unprofessional, don't push it. But for example, um, I cut up in my gut reaction book, I cut up the exam paper and I, I cut out the words, here goes nothing and I stuck it onto the front cover of my gut reaction book. Tell me an examiner who would not smile. At the end of my gut reaction book, I had the little bit at the bottom of the exam paper that says end of paper or end of exam or something, and that was at the back of my gut reaction book. Do you know what I mean? Add little creative things in there. Be original, do something you feel. When I say interpret the stimulus in your own way, I mean interpret the stimulus in your own way. Incorporate an issue, take an issue, do something with your art, don't just turn up on the day and paint some flowers. No shade on Vincent, but don't do that. Collections. For my collections unit, everybody did like, I have a collection of dice, I have a collection of shoes. 
I have a collection of Victoria's Secret spray. And they didn't get nines, not because they weren't good, not because they didn't produce amazing, incredible pieces of art. That might have been meaningful to them. It wasn't meaningful. It wasn't meaningful. <laughs> it wasn't mean in the nicest possible way. It was not meaningful. So collections, um, I did collections of women, the way that men collect women. I did collections of things that can be used to harm a person. You might have spotted that, um, a biro drawing that I did way back. Um, and what I did is I put all of those things in an evidence bag. You have to come up with things. And this is not me sitting here being like, oh my God, I'm such a genius. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's it's not that it's even that clever. I've just thought about it and you need to think about it. You need, you need to think about it. <laughs> you need to visit galleries. You, you need to visit galleries. For my final piece, I went to three different galleries. Um, it was two of them were exhibitions and one of them was the Tate. Um, I bought a sketchbook from Hobbycraft. I said, I'm not going to rip out any of these pages. And by sketchbook, I mean the paper ones that are kind of a little bit thinner. I went and I looked at as many artists as it took. I think it ended up being like 12 or 15. And I made a double page spread on each of them until the entire book was done. You go, you you buy a postcard from the gift shop. It's one pa live with it, it's one pound. You buy a postcard from the gift shop. Don't buy your monster drink can that day. Go buy your postcard, annotate your postcard, draw the postcard, draw the artist's work. Draw something in the style of the artist. Talk about the artist. Talk about how you felt when you were looking at it. Talk about, take pictures take pictures of yourself with the art that's so important take pictures also if you want to be a try hard like me if you want to go for that nine go to a place that links to your final piece so i went to bletchley park which is where the enigma code was cracked take pictures make it a day out go with your friends you know go with your artsy friends who want to be aesthetic want want those pictures for instagram go take some pictures post them on your Instagram, put them in your art book, do it. If your examiner isn't concerned about you yet, this is how to make them. This, Cause this is the aim, ladies and gents, you need them to be concerned. And if you're not concerned about me yet, this is how you're gonna be. At Bletchley Park, they were giving out these little free beads and they were like the little tags that they used to put on pigeons in the war to carry messages like the, and they had little numbers on them so they could identify the pigeons. They were giving them out free, so I took one. I took two, I put one in my sketchbook and explained it, and then I put one on the shoelace of, of the shoe of this full-sized sculpture. That's the detail you need to pay attention to. I'm gonna talk about backgrounds briefly. There is a lot of controversy. Some, you'll see some of these videos of the, you know, the amazing artists who just walked in there and just drew a seascape and because it was incredible, they got a nine. I can't relate. Um, but they'll say to you, oh, you don't spend time on backgrounds. Don't spend time on backgrounds. Like you don't need to spend time on backgrounds. Personally, I spent time on backgrounds. Whether that was me overcompensating or whether it was just, I, I like the look of them. I think they're really cool. Whether you're gonna watercolor something, whether you're gonna paint it first, even if you just get a piece of like nice paper, go to, I was really lucky. My art teacher was handing out these wallpaper samples. Literally like go to a wallpaper shop and get like old wallpaper and put it in your book. Any material is useful. Anything, anything you find on the street. You need to be a homeless person in the nicest possible way. You need to go out on the street and you need to pick up rubbish from the street and stick it in your art book. And then you need to explain why you did that without sounding like a criminal. Anyway, backgrounds. Yes, do backgrounds, make them pretty. Don't sacrifice the work for the background. I did, but don't. Um, just make the background pretty. No, sorry, but if you examiners, yes, there's syllabuses, there's checklists, but no examiner is going to sit down and be like, oh, she, she did a background. Like, they're humans, they want to see some colour, they want to see it look nice, they want to make it look nice on the page. And again, it contributes. If the examiner likes you, you will get a good mark if you relate it back to yourself. Teachers, this is a big thing to understand. I was so lucky. Shout out 
um, to Miss Cager, Mr. West, um, and the many other brilliant art teachers that I had. Um, I love my art teachers. I thought they were so cool. I thought they sort of, they taught me a lot. They gave me a lot of ideas and they went with me on my craziness. Like they never said, Emily, that's too big. Like, and bearing in mind, I stole, and I mean stole, a chair from their classroom and I mod rocked it. And I actually used um, one of my art teacher's statues to mod rock for the sculpture for Alan Turing. And never did they say to me, no, Emily, that you're being silly, which they probably should have, but they didn't. They were like, oh, okay, cool. How, how are we gonna do this? And they would go with me on it. They'd contribute towards it. Cause I think they were just about as crazy as me. But if you are not lucky enough to have an art teacher like this, ignore them. And I t I'm not endorsing, you know, ignoring your teachers, but it's your GCSE and at the end of the day, grades, yeah, they're important, but wouldn't you rather leave your GCSEs knowing that you created something that you love and you will forever be proud of? Isn't that what matters? I think it is. So do what you don't want. let anybody tell you that you shouldn't do the thing you're thinking of because it's too big or it's too this. Don't get me wrong, if like it's a basic seascape, <laughs> I'm telling you not to do it. Please, I can't look at another painting of the sea. Please don't. But if your art teacher is telling you to do something, to not to do something because it's too big, ignore them. If your art teacher is telling you to do something because they don't like it, ignore them. Listen to your art teachers. If you know that they're saying something and it makes sense, like I was very reluctant to do this at times, but my art teacher was saying to me, Emily, you need more drawings in your book, or Emily, you need to, you know, what about, what does this represent? What does this do? Listen. Because at the end of the day, in a lot of schools, the art teachers contribute towards marketing. Something that my art teacher did at the time, I was like, oh my God. But now I am forever grateful to her because actually, it made my piece so much better. Basically, she said to me, Emily, I'm a little bit unsure about this Alan Turing thing. Like, why? I need to understand why you're doing it. I need to understand why this impacts upon you as a 16 year old girl, like this, this war hero. And she wasn't saying like, she doesn't get it. Of course she gets it. She's an intelligent woman. She was saying, you need to get it. You need to understand why you're doing this. You need to understand why it relates to you. And I didn't realize that at the time. Of course I do now. Um, so she, I said to her, I really want to do it. And she said, okay, Cool, you can do it. Sit down, write a diary of why you're doing it. And so I did, and I put it in my book. And I ended up sitting writing this page of writing with tears dripping down my face onto the- By the way, if you get tear stains on your book, extra points for you, keep them in on fact, there. If there isn't tears, tear stains it's somewhere in your book, you're not, I'm sorry, but you're not gonna get a nine. I sat writing this piece of writing about the reasons why I relate to this story and the reasons why everyone should relate to this story in absolute floods of tears. And I wrote a three page, and when I say it, I'm, I'm gonna show you up close um, because it's deep, but this is the writing I did with like silver pen on this black book. I did several pages of that. And by the end, I put it in my book and I had a, a firm re emotional reason why I was doing what I was Moral doing. Is Listen to your teachers if they're saying something useful, and if they're not, don't. There are certain things you can bring into the exam, like your resources, and there are also, depending on your final piece, they allow you like a preparation period before the exam. Certain, certain pieces, certain teachers, all circumstantial, but check with your teachers. Is there anything that I need to do before this exam in terms of bringing things into the exam? or? Even if you're gonna do your whole final piece at home, like a loser, because that's what we are, if we're being honest. Even um, if you're gonna make like a final piece at home that is exactly like the final piece you're gonna do in the actual exam, just to prepare, and then you're gonna go in and make it literally again from scratch in the exam, do that. Because to, planning to fail is failing to plan. It's the other way around, is it? should be so prepared when you get into that exam you do not need any extra time you are fine and at because we did it for two days you want to be that person who's finished within two hours because you've prepared so much that was me i was finished within two hours again nothing to do with talent surely because i neglected 
all of my other subjects, which is 0.5 <laughs> of how to get a GCSE art grade nine. Neglect your other subjects, but don't neglect them too much. Just prioritize art and then pull everything else together at the last minute, which is again what I did. But you want to finish as soon as you can. And then you want to be looking around the room at all of these people panicking, like, what, what are you doing? Because then you're going to have so much extra time. You're going to be able to make lino prints. You're going to be able to make mono prints. You're going to be able to draw it a hundred times. Take your pictures, print them out if you are allowed to, because sometimes um, if you're doing a digital project, they allow computers and printouts in the exam room. Um, you, you're going to have so much extra time. And you are going to feel like, a million dollars as the American. Do say. not leave. If I see a single one of you leaving a blank page in your book, I am going to cry. Don't do it. Like you've run out of time. If there is a blank page in your book, rip it out. Rip it out. And if there's a blank page, like that's the other side of something important, get something else important, put it there. If it's another picture of your final piece, because they haven't seen it enough, throw it in there. Honestly, please listen to me. Do, do crazy stuff. Include cardboard in your book, include wood, include necklaces, include wild and wacky things that your examiner will go, what? I don't know if you saw, but on the front of my collections book, I did like a row of marbles, a row of tiny little bottles, a row of, mini figures do that do what if you things. can't already tell i'm a massive fan of a certain podcast the keen eared among you would know it but that particular podcast teaches you men love the crazy and do you know what not only is that true art examiners love the crazy art examiners are actually exactly like men <laughs> let me tell you why this is a, an epiphany I've just had. I did not even plan this. It's happening on the spot, live. Of course, some art examiners are men, but all art teachers and art examiners, and this is a terrible sexist generalization, and I genuinely apologize, but to a certain extent, you can see, you can draw the, the similarities because art teachers love the crazy, men love the crazy. Art teachers are very, they're very easy to understand in the way they think. So it's a little bit like how men say, oh, I don't like a girl wearing a lot of makeup. Okay, fair enough. But then you want her to wear highlighter, concealer, foundation, brows, lashes, you get the point, but just not lipstick or neon eyeshadow. No, 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 because that's a lot of makeup. Um, but then they don't actually realize if you're wearing makeup and you, you're not wearing lipstick, they don't realise. Some men, some men, don't come at me. I love you all, but some men. It's a little bit like that with art examiners. Art examiners say, oh, we don't want backgrounds. We don't want fancy backgrounds. We just want the content. You know, we just want a naturally nice spread. You want backgrounds. You want backgrounds. You want makeup. You want the whole shablam. You want it all, and but don't pretend you don't. That's our Also, example. similarly to men, if you use certain words, you will get what you want. <laughs> this is really unhealthy, I'm sorry. Let me tell you the words. Development, refinement, experimentation. Certain sentences, how it makes you feel, what the artist was thinking, what the artist was feeling. This links back to my stimulus, will be your new favorite sentence you should you might as well just put it as your instagram bio if we're yes. being honest those of you who have figured out the podcast you can see where my head is so at. that is the long and short of it ladies and gentlemen if you've got to this point i am shocked i think three people will watch this video and <laughs> none of them will get to this point but do what you feel passionate about do what nobody else is doing do too much doing too much. They are the three words that you need to have in your head at all times. Neglect your other subjects and then pick them up at the last second. Nobody's going to know because as I said, art GCSE is the hardest, so that's the hardest to pick up. Remember your bang bang endings. Remember your obscene final piece. Remember that people should be concerned about you. 
in terms of the content of your book and how much detail it goes the process into. I'm gonna round it up you've got your creative little inspirations you add into your book as well as the mind maps the initial response do a gut reaction book I love a gut reaction initial book. ideas development of your initial ideas your first plan, development of that plan, experimentation, development, refine your final plan, your annotated final piece, something I forgot to include, progress photos. In the exam, take progress photos. Write paragraph by paragraph what you are doing to prove that it's your own work and to prove that you are keeping track. pictures of your final piece, evaluations. Then take everything I just said and do six of it. And then do the same in your other units and your other books. I realised this started like a book tour and then just slowly went into a monologue. So for that, I apologise. Um, but I am um, wishing every one of you the best of luck. If you would like me to make another video like this, um, so for example, the one about evaluating art, if you'd like me to go deeper into evaluating your own work, any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Like this video, subscribe to this video so that you can come back and you can watch it when you need help. Um, thank you for being here with me. This lovely lady in the background. Some of you might have seen these pair of legs in the background. Um, I sell paintings. Full pictures of these paintings are on my Instagram. So if you would like to head over and have a look at them, that would be great. <laughs> if you um, haven't already checked me out on TikTok, there is a lot of GCSE art content on there, slash other GCSE content and rants rather similar to this one. Um, and my handle is at Emily underscore GVX, I believe. And yes, my Instagram handle is actress underscore Emily Brady. And if you could go and follow me on them, we could be friends. Also, if you subscribe, I will actually go out and buy a camera because this is currently being filmed very poorly on my phone. <laughs> also, uh, for those of you asking on TikTok, yes, he does give me nightmares. And yes, I do wake up in the middle of the night and think that it is a real man.